Here we have our dog bowl selection. Different sets of resonant bowls from the charity shop. We have a U87 recording that in cardioid. Another cardioid microphone in the Shure 57 here. And then we're doing an MS here with an AKG 490B I think and a 414. So what we're getting is a nice little wide sound from the 414, more focused here, then two really focused sounds here. And then we can have a little play, maybe turn it into some samples, maybe use it as is. kick drum. I'm recording that with a D112 and a PZM which you might be able to see in there hidden away and I'm gonna turn this into something more electronic once I've got the raw signal. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of the synthesis stuff that I did. I'm just going to show a few brief examples because the kind of the, the process is sort of the same, but it's the manipulation that where all the, the different changes happen. So we might as well go through well, the, probably the most important synth, which is the introduction synth. We've got the kind of I called it the vintage drive organ on here, but I believe I changed it later because it gets a bit more glitchy as it progresses. So what I used was alchemy, and I started off with a really simple sine wave actually here, and then kind of had that tuned down an octave in the end because uh, I kind of like that as a bit of adding a little bit of extra bass to the frequency kind of thicken up the sound and then this here the notch ringer one took over with there's on the volume there's an LFO controlling that and as you can see it's quite a, a strange wave so it, it affects the sound really strangely as the time goes on and adds this kind of glitch kind of sound the other parts in here are kind of affected by the same thing just this one sorry and then we've got the master volume, which is on the ADSR, and a cutoff, which is on just a, a typical kind of sine wave sort of pattern. So if I play that for you, as you can see, this is the main sound. Uh, previously, I used to use a lot of presets and try and find sounds, but here, this I, I started everything from scratch and just experienced, uh, not experienced, experimented with everything. So it was quite interesting. Okay, so this is the second sound that I made that's relevant right now in terms of a different approach to synthesis because some of the other ones I took the same similar thing, start with a sine wave and, and build up from there. So there's one where I used an 80s synth to do some sounds. Uh, and also this one is the this one's more of a point of interest for me in terms of manipulating sample into synthesis. Um, I'll play the clip of me recording vocals now. for what I did for that, I just took that sound, I reduced the uh, the ADA, uh, ADSR controls on here, so it's got really short attacks, which is like quick stab, kind of p pizzicato sort of thing, and uh, with, but the release is a bit longer, so you kind of you kind of get a little bit of an aftertouch on it in a way. So yeah, um, if we have a little play of that, you can hear what I did. I also did a little bit of things in Logic, so I used a pedal board, for some reverse delay because reverse delay always adds this little bit of strangeness to everything and I always I always appreciate that kind of atmosphere I like to use long feedbacks so it goes on for quite a while as well kind of having a nice little outro and then it's just a, a normal space designer on there so so it's just my vocal being pitched down by the synthesis process there and turned into a more of a sort of like a wavetable-y sort of process with alchemy. The main thing was that I really I found the sound quite interesting. I started off. Okay, so for this sound, I'm gonna be playing a wine glass with a violin bow. Sort of horror sort of sounding thing. It's very, very strange. You have to listen when you hear the track. Anyway, I'm gonna be recording it a very similar way to the dog bowls with a MS here in the center. I've got a U87 and a 57 capturing the sound. And I turned it into a synthesis a synthesizer 
again using alchemy because it's just so flexible for this sort of thing and uh, I've taken some of the controls and we've taken it so it's using that as a, as a informing the, the timbre rather than necessarily it's not playing the sample as like as a sampler would and then I added a little wave in there just to add a bit of texture This is quite, this is something I put kind of in the background. It's okay, so for this part, I've got a MS on the piano here, just recording the general ambience of the room. We've got some nice ribbon mics, AEA, recording a left and a right. We've got a hiding Korean girl behind the thing. She's very shy, she doesn't like to be seen. We've got Rupert Neve microphones here, doing again left and right from a different perspective, for a different sound. And, who can forget a U87 recording the room? I'm recording some toms. Very angry toms. It's probably clicked out the camera. I'm using some 421s for spot mics. I've kind of tried to isolate them a bit so they don't get too too much bleed from each other but it's not the end of the world if they do. We've also got some AEA ribbon mics, they're very nice and fancy getting some little bit of stereo mid building here. We've got AKGs micing the floor, see what interesting effects we get out of that. And then up at the top we have RN17s. So again, we're kind of building some kind of high frequency stereo image with that. So let's do it. And who can forget the U87 moon mic? Okay, so for this part, I'm going to be recording bass guitar played with violin bow. It's a very, very deep sub bass effect. And we're putting that through into my Sans Amp VT Bass TI, so it's just providing a bit of saturation and distortion to give a bit of growl, angry kind of, but a bit subtle at the same time, sort of tube bass amp sort of thing. Then that is being recorded in here by sending it through the line outputs into the bass amp here, which is being recorded with an SN57 just for that direct sound. Then we've got an MS to give a wider sound here. And then we're coming out to the widest possible, nice, far away room sound with the U87. So what I'm doing with the violin bass here, I've sent it all out of the bus, so there's no output here, no direct sound, because I don't actually like it. It's a bit rough and the direct sound, so what I did instead was take it out of here, send it into a nice tape delay. Nothing special, but it just sounds nice, the little cut off here. Atmosphere to just leave it all off and full. And then I've put it into a little space designer. Huge, like four second reverb. Just want that big, big sound washing in and reverb going crazy. And then, yeah, just the channel EQ to tame some of the lows and highs. Give it a little bit of an edge in this, this kind of category. some vocals. I'm going to use a 4 and 4 because I quite like the way my vocals sound with a 4 and 4 compared to a U87 or the like. Uh, I'm using an MS here with a 4 and 4 and a C480B. I'm going to see whether that has any effect on the vocal recording. Get kind of wide sort of sound. And then I've got a U87 there for the room. So let's give it a go. I want to be free From this pain before
you can also the retro settings on here, which give it a kind of more of a kind of warm sound. Uh, I've been mixing with that on the entire time, so I can know that the sound I'm getting in here is the same as the sound I'm getting in my actual bounce down. I've also done a little bit of EQing during this mix session. And what I've done is I've taken some of the more aggressive parts of the bass synth there so that they can give it more space to the sub bass. So I've taken out 50 from the synths and added 50 back into the subs. For the percussions, I've kind of added a little bit of ground kind of it's the 1.5 area and then taking out a bit of the 220 for it's kind of the closest I can get to my ideal 250 for getting rid of some of that mud in there. On the piano I just had a little bit of lightness with the around 3k range and then for the vocals I did a little bit of boosting at the 10k the vocals have gone boosted the 10k, taken that, it's really added a really nice bit of brightness and height to the mix, uh, as soon as you take it off, I'm not going to take it off now because I'm printing, but as soon as you take it off, you can really feel the difference, it kind of gets buried in the mix, but then when you bring it in, just it rises above the mix rather than not just cutting through, but it, yeah, it rises above and gives a sense of height to the vocals, it wasn't there before, and I also EQ'd the uh, FX channel, which is basically just reverbs and delay, so there's a couple of bits as we can hear a couple more in the Pro Tools section. A bit of reverb things I did, some kind of space there, that's the convolution reverb within this stereo bit, that sort of thing. Um, and then there was also a rotary speaker that I applied on there because I thought that might be a nice little addition. And what I did with the EQ for that was to um, take out a lot of the mud because um, often when you have a lot of reverbs going on you kind of forget that the amount of things you're sending to it can actually add a bit of mud to the mix and the spaces that it's recreating and when it comes to making a mix it's a bit more important to cut that out so that the reverbs really breathe so actually I found it quite useful to do that which is something I hadn't done before I was just trying to find kind of bright reverbs but actually you can find a nice big reverb and cut a few EQs, areas rather, of the EQ, and then boost a few little bits as well. So I only boosted kind of really lightly in the kind of 10K area. And then I cut around 50, and I also put a little high pass on there. There's a couple of high passes on there just to really control those low frequencies, but without taking them out of the mix entirely. I still think it sounds quite deep, which is quite good because it's quite a dark track rather than being anything bright in terms of like thematically speaking so yeah I'm gonna listen to how this print sounds and then we'll get to the mastering process which should be uh, I'm currently in the studio for the last session of my sonic experiment this is BYA 124 um, not probably not the most ideal room for mastering but it's better than my bedroom so I'm gonna go with this uh, it's got some quite nice gear and stuff uh, as you can see here, it's got some nice little compressors and stuff. I'm not actually using them so much as the uh, mix bus compression on here. And there's a couple of things that I've done in addition to the mix before I quickly go to mastering. So as you can see, I have a few elements that I just wanted to bring up a bit in the mix. Like I wanted to reinforce the vocals because they were really quiet. So all I did was I, I've just put them on a separate track and just brought them in a little bit to reinforce themselves. I've done sort of the same EQing as what I had before, except obviously it's a different desk, so the voicing is a little bit different. But it's not a major deal, it was just a little thing to add a little bit more presence and depth to the vocals there. I also brought the sub bass drop back in a bit because it was a little bit lost after I printed from the uh, the Custom Series 25 in Vestry 1. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that in and reinforce it a little bit. So I kind of boosted the around, I think, yes, yeah, around 50 I boosted just to give it a little more bass push. It's not too much because I don't want to overload the mix like I was doing before in the uh, demo stage. So I've done that and I've also had a, done a little bit of mix bus compression to kind of glue the mix a little bit back together while I print it. 
then I'm going to go into Pro Tools and I'm going to do a bit of mastering from there. All right, we're on to the final part of the entire process now, which is the mastering now. So I've kind of, as you can see on the screen there, I have sort of upped the overall kind of level of it without kind of pushing it too hard because it's quite a dynamic track. It goes from really quiet to quite intense at the end and then back to really quiet as you can hear right now. So I really didn't want to destroy those dynamics with too much compression and limiting. So I've just kind of very slightly touched it with a limiter. A little bit of EQ to brighten up the, the parts that were kind of a bit too dark in the mixing process. But um, without without getting rid of the warmth that I got from the, from the analog summing that I did. So yeah, it's just a little bit of touching up rather than anything major. Uh, I didn't want to push it too hard because I've always had a bit of a problem with gain staging and loudness. So I'm trying to experiment with a bit of quieter quieter touch sort of stuff. I had to listen to some Brian Eno stuff and that's even quieter than what I've done here. So I feel like I've got on kind of on the right track of balancing that kind of Eno ambient kind of sound with the, the more popular mainstream sound that I'm trying to build with the track. So yeah, I hope it all goes very well. I'm gonna listen to it on a couple of different speakers and systems, but um, in here it's quite nice because it's quite, it's quite a bit more of a transparent monitoring than in Vestry 1, which is super warm, but really nice. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's all gone, but time will be the test for sure.